Hello my dear friends, welcome to Nurses Ladder. Today in this video I am going to talk about vitamin A. This is one of the important topic which you need to know when you are going to prepare for a competitive exam for nursing. So let us start. First is introduction. In introduction, vitamin A is also known as retinol. The other name for vitamin A is retinol. It is a type of fat soluble vitamins. That we already know that vitamins are mainly divided into two. First is water soluble vitamins and the other one is fat soluble vitamin. So fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K. These four vitamins are fat soluble vitamin. So in, the, in that the first number is vitamin A. So it is also referred to as the other name for vitamin A is retinol. And if you see in detail vitamin A is mainly available in animal fats. Also it is also available in plants but in plants it is available as a pro vitamin okay it is not available in the correct vitamin form it is available as a pro vitamin so this pro vitamin is known as beta carotene this pro vitamin is known as beta carotene or carotenoids beta carotene or carotenoids so this is all about the introduction of vitamin a next i'm going to talk about the properties of vitamin a Vitamin A is destroyed by oxidation. Okay, so vitamin A is destroyed by oxidation. That means in the presence of oxygen, it can get destroyed. Vitamin A can withstand heat to up to 100 degree Celsius. It can withstand heat to up to 100 degree Celsius. It is absorbed. The absorption of vitamin A usually happens in small intestine. So in our body, vitamin A is usually absorbed in small intestine. And what about the metabolism? Metabolism of vitamin A happens in liver. Vitamin A is metabolized in liver. And in liver, it is again stored. Once it is metabolized, it is again stored inside the liver in the form of retinal palmitate. So vitamin A is absorbed in small intestine it is metabolized in the liver and it is stored in liver as retinyl palmitate the main functions of vitamin a are first is vision so vitamin a is mainly involved in night vision this is one of the important question in many competitive exams vision is one of the major function of vitamin a and specifically night vision because it helps in the maintenance of rhodopsin okay or rods rods are mainly helpful for night vision second is development of epithelial cells so this is this is one of the important part of skin okay epithelial cells so epithelial cells development is mainly due to adequate amount of vitamin a in our body next it prevents carcinogenesis carcinogenesis is the formation of Car carcinogens or cancer cells so vitamin a to some extent it can prevent cancer cell formation next it helps in the formation of bonds okay so for proper bond formation happens with adequate vitamin a in our body next it also helps in reproduction the main dietary sources of vitamin a is divided into plant sources and animal sources so first i'm going to talk about the plant sources in that first is green leafy vegetables next red yellow and orange fruits fruits which are red in color yellow in color and orange in color then spinach amaranthus coriander drumstick leaves refined oils as well as vanaspati okay all of these plant sources okay are great sources of vitamin a what about animal sources animal sources can be from fish liver uh, then egg yolk and animal liver okay so all of these can be taken uh, so you can get enough amount of vitamin a 
the dietary requirements of vitamin A include for first up to one year of age it includes 300 to 400 micrograms for one to three years it is 250 microgram four to six years 300 microgram seven to nine years 400 microgram 10 to 12 years 600 microgram adolescent and for adults it is 750 microgram for pregnant woman 750 microgram for lactating woman it is 1150 microgram so these are dietary requirement of vitamin a based on age groups the first condition which is due to vitamin a deficiency is xerophthalmia okay it is xerophthalmia it is also referred to as xerosis so this xeroxis can happen to conjunctiva as well as cornea it can happen to conjunctiva as well as cornea okay so conjunctival cirrhosis can result in dry thickened pigmented conjunctiva so here the conjunctiva which is white in color it turns dry thickened as well as pigmented it, it, it may have lot of pigmentations so all of this happens due to the keratinization of epithelial cells so epithelial cells are the form basic cells in our body so this cells gets keratinized keratin is a basic protein so this keratinization happens and this results in dry thickened and pigmented conjunctiva this leads to conjunctiva to be looked as a smoky appearance it may get a look of smoky appearance what about cornea cornea also may get keratinized okay keratinization of cornea which results in dull hazy and lustreless appearance that means the cornea becomes so dull it will lose its brightness so this is referred to as serophthalmia it is one of the major complication of vitamin a deficiency and it is so early as soon as the vitamin a deficiency starts serophthalmia can be seen okay the second condition which is due to uh, vitamin a deficiency is bite out spot this is one of the common question in many of the competitive examinations so what is a bite out spot this is first described by bite in 1863 and this is a glistening white plague this is a type of plague which is glistening white so white in color and its shape is usually triangular it has a triangle shape it usually gets adhered or fixed to the conjunctiva so you can find this on the conjunctiva which is usually glistening white in color and it has a triangular shape it is first described by Bytot in 1863 the third vitamin A deficiency is keratomalacia. So it is a late complication of vitamin A deficiency. It is a late complication and when it happens is if serophthalmia is not treated, if serophthalmia is not treated, it can lead to keratomalacia. What happens here is it mainly affects the cornea. It mainly affects the cornea cornea become opaque opaque means it gets a lot of pores cornea become opaque it can even become edematous and it may be infiltrated with lots of leukocytes which even lead to necrosis and to destruction of cornea so cornea can get a necrosis necrosis means cell death it's a complete damage and destruction of cornea and this leads to complete blindness so a person when he or she gets a vitamin a deficiency can even become blind so it's a very dangerous condition vitamin a deficiency has to be treated immediately as soon as possible okay so now i'm going to talk about how we can prevent or how we can treat vitamin a deficiency in case of oral dose it can be either given as a retinal palmitate that is 110 mg of retinal palmitate and 66 mg of retinal acetate you can either give both of these are not required any one 
110 mg retinal palmitate or 66 mg of retinal acetate which is equivalent or equivalent to 2 lakh international units of vitamin A. Both of these are meaning same. So this is usually started once the vitamin A deficiency is diagnosed on the first day you will give this second day again you will repeat the same dose and if at all if the child or um, adult has presence of quarshiok quarshiok is usually protein energy malnutrition which is usually found in children so if this is found in the child then you can repeat the dose after one to four weeks that means after one week or after one month you can repeat if at all the child has quad shocker otherwise it is not required again after four to six six months you can again repeat the dose in order to prevent the vitamin a deficiency so for prevention part you can repeat the dose after four to six months or in every four to six months next if at all if the child is six to eleven months of age then you can give half the dose of this dose okay half dose is only required if at all if the child is 6 to 11 months of age this is all about the oral dose of vitamin a next comes the I, I am injection okay so i am injection is usually water soluble the injection which you will give vitamin a is usually water miscible and it the dosage is 55 mg this is when it is given it is usually given if at all if the child or the adult can't take the vitamin a orally because oral dose of vitamin a is safe it is cheap and it is readily available it's easily consumable but if it is not possible in cases of stomatitis stomatitis is an inflammation of stoma that is the uh, mucous membrane of the mouth so stomatitis if it is present for the uh, child or adult if the child or adult has a vomiting severe form of vomiting or any form of malabsorption most common one is cystic fibrosis if the child or adult has a cystic fibrosis which is leading to malabsorption then you cannot give vitamin a through oral dose in that case you can administer it through im injection oil um, oily injections are not preferred because it is not properly absorbed Okay, so this injection which is of dose 55 mg is usually required.